Hello and welcome to more Spyro Reignited Trilogy. We are here in the artisan world, and I just want to give you guys a recap of what we've done so far. We got Stone Hill, Dark Hollow, and Sunny Flight 100% done. Nine dragons saved, one dragon egg, as well as 654 out of the 12,000 treasure. So today, we're going to get the hub world for the artisan's world done. And honestly, there's only two other levels, so we'll probably finish off the artisan world entirely today. We also have some skill points we can do. So one of them is in the artisan world itself, and one is in Town Square, which is another level inside this world. So it looks like we're going to go for those as well. I've decided, guys, we are going to try to go for these skill points. So let's go up this way and uh, see if we can get to this platform. See if we can get these goodies here. So just getting up here, that alone was that skill point. That's how I had a feeling it would be that. And it was. So there's that. So over this way, we're going to have a dragon. And, well, let's see if he explains how this works. Let's see. Argus? <laughs> what is this? Train or World of Warcraft, dude? All right. Cool flash. Do that again. The artisan's boss is through a portal in the dragon mouth. But you are not yet ready, Spyro. First, you must complete one of the other artisan lands. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to have to go finish Town Square before we can uh, get this one to open. I don't know the exact thing that triggers it. I think you might have to... I don't know. Do you have to, like, get a dragon in each world? I don't know the exact thing that opens it, but I do know if we go and do Town Square and come back, it'll be open. So, let's go do that, crud. So, I'll run over this way. Town Square is through this little tunnel to the left here. That's pretty much the only place in Artisan World that we haven't yet explored. And there's going to be our final dragon for the world itself. Is it Thomas or Tumas? I, I don't know, man. Hey, Spyro, press the jump button twice to glide. And, and don't be afraid. Afraid? Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. Yeah, that's kind of scary because we uh have tiny wings. We can't exactly fly. We can only glide. So if we jump into a bad spot, we're going to die, dude. Well, what's more likely to happen is we'll just uh, fall into some water, take some damage or something like that. Let's defeat this gem thief here. And one more hit should do it. I think they take three hits. Come here, guy. Dude, roast his butt. Dude, I love that we can roast the grass as well. There we go. Let's go back this way. And grab all these. There's 100 treasure in the hub world, but we're still missing some. I think there's some up this way. So we have to go through the swoopy doo doo dah here. The swirly swirl. Look at us go, man. Oh, I'm feeling dizzy. So a few right there, there's one there in that chest, and a couple more this way. Let's get these ones first. We'll save that other chest for last. Yo, look at the shadows. Looking great. I don't think the original game had real-time shadows like that. I would be shocked if it did, because shadows back in the day were typically just like little circles under your character, which were great for platforming, because they would tell you where your character was. Because um, you could just look, kind of look below your feet and see where the shadow was, so if you're trying to line up a jump, it could help. I don't even know if the original Spyro game had that, but... Um, yeah, it wasn't until, like, the PS2 era, GameCube era, where sometimes you would start to see, uh, real-time shadows. Hmm, did I not get everything? Let's see here. No, we're still missing a five gem, or it might be multiple gems, but let's go look, guys. Let's go take a look around here. Whoa, is this platform floating? What the? Come on, guys. You gotta make the ground flat. Or maybe that's just the shadow being weird. I don't know, man. But let's go look for these last five. How did I miss that? How the crud did I miss those three? All right, well, we're still missing two, so it might be in an enemy that we forgot to kill. It might be over in the hedge maze by uh, by this level, by Dark Hollow, that I didn't explore properly. Hmm. I'll just look around. I'm not going to make you guys watch me find these last two. I'll just, I'll just go find them. Aha! It's right there. Man, so there is the turnoff to Town Square. Dude, those were probably on-screen sparkling as I made my way over there, so... And sometimes I get too focused on one thing. I get tunnel vision, and I just... Uh, miss things that are right in front of me but anyways the artisan hub world is done so now we have one more main level here which is town square and then we're gonna have the boss level as well so first off let's go to town square there is a skill point here which was i think to knock down all of the bulls i'll double check what that is we'll definitely go for it uh, if you see any lag right there that's just part of the game when it's tallying up your treasure it seems to lag a bit at least on the switch version i'm not sure how the other versions are here we are Town Square, <laughs> immediately greeted by hopping chickens. Oh, man. Well, let's get this treasure in this bottom area. There was a way in the PS1 version to jump up this way and actually make it to the top right there. But let's go. Let, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's rescue Nils first. Wow, does this guy have a million gems? 
Welcome to Town Square, Spyro. Begin exploring by gliding to that area with the bulls. Use the hmm. right stick to get a... Maybe not the best camera angle for that line, because the bulls are up there as well. So I guess you could look where he's pointing, but yeah. So in, in the original, there was some way you could actually get up here. I don't think they're going to be able to do that in this one. Yeah, you could kind of like fly up there and somehow you'd get up there, but... Yeah, well, we'll just play through the level normally. So let me just double check what that skill point is. Um, all bulls stuck. So I don't know if that means once each or if you have to get them all stuck at the same time. Oh, crud. Okay, so if we flame them, they just die. I think we have to do that. So I might have already missed my chance by killing off that one bull. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill them all this time. I don't know if they're going to respawn, but either way, we'll come back in and we'll stick them all if we need to. Ooh, we got a new chest type. So this one right here, uh, what ha will happen is we have to flame it, and that'll make the gem pop out like that. And we have to jump and get it before it uh, goes back in. So some chests up there, but we can't quite get up that high uh, right now. So put this glide over this way. <laughs> get the most obvious one up. They didn't even hide that one at all. It's like, here you go, buddy. Dodge the water pit there. Let's save ourselves. Devlin. Wow, it's some Devlin eggs. That's a giant cake. It says Spyro on it, dude. I have the worst itch on the tip of my wing. Did you know that you get your longest glides by pressing the jump button at the very top of your jump? Yes, I, I did know that. We learned that in the last episode. <laughs> but, dude, that guy just took his spoon and scratched his back. It's kind of disgusting to uh, scratch yourself with your cooking implements. Dude, can you imagine... Imagine someone scratching themselves with a spatula and then flipping your burger with that crud. A little gross, a little gross. Actually, I think that was a part of that. There's like this old movie called Good Burger, and I'm pretty sure there's a character that totally did that. Or something similar, at least. Okay, so we're going to keep on flaming the bulls here, but we will we will come back in and try to stick them all to get that skill point. That is a lot of bulls, though. Man, why can't all of the skill points be easy like the Artisan Homeworld one, where we just had to go to a ledge that we were going to go to anyways for treasure? Why can't they all be that easy? I mean, that one doesn't even feel like a skill point. It's just like playing the game normally. It's like, can you can you ever 100% the game and not get that skill point? I don't know, man. Hm. Spyro, do you see a man dressed in blue running around here? He's a thief and he's stolen a dragon egg. You've got to track him down and, and get that egg. Run, run. <laughs> I'm getting a little winded. Oh my gosh, excellent voice acting performance, man. I love it. Yeah, they redid the voices. Surprisingly, the original game also had voice acting. There's the exit portal. But the original game also had voice acting, which did come into play sometimes during PlayStation 1 games. Before that, it was very rare. Like, on a, on a cartridge game, like on Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo or something like that, there might be a rare case where you get, like, a word or two, but you would never have just, like, full lines like that, as far as I know. So we're trying to get up here. It's a pretty tight jump, though. But yeah, the PlayStation 1, because it was a CD-based system, they had a lot more storage space, so they could fit the voice lines in CRUD. I don't know if you ever got voice acting on the Nintendo 64, where the storage space was a lot more limited. I'd, I'd be surprised if they did that, because, yeah, N64 had, had some advantages. Cartridges do have advantages, uh, but the disadvantage is the lack of storage space. The advantage, of course, is they get faster loading times. So you N64 games would typically load a lot faster than PS1. And it's kind of funny, after all of these years, Spyro is now on a Nintendo system. I think we had stuff on the GameCube as well, but not only is Spyro on a Nintendo system, but also as a cartridge, because the Switch technically uses cartridges. I guess they call them game cards or whatever, but it's basically the same thing. So claim all this. And we have another new chest type. This one is a like a windmill chest or something. You gotta flame it several times and get the top to spin off like that. And we're done with treasure. Let's get this dragon. This is probably the last dragon as well. Thor. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. You can always check your progress by accessing the guidebook through the pause menu. Oh, poor Thor. I remember Thor being the super buff dragon in the original. Man, he is uh, a little bit of a wimpy dragon in this one. All right, so we're gonna go back this way. And we're going to fly back up here again. Oh, come on, Spyro. Get up there, you crud. So we have to get up there to um, get that egg thief. I've already got all the treasure, at least. Oh, there we go. That is a tight jump, man. Even though I've done it so many times throughout the years playing the original Spyro, it's always been a tough jump for me. So let's make sure we fly across. I can hear him, but I can't see him. Um, uh, where is he? 
Do I have to drop down at some point? Let's, uh... So that's where I jumped to before, and I don't think that was the right answer. Oh, we, yeah, he dropped down there. Okay, let's chase him and see if we can get him. There we go, we got him. I remember him running along the top, but I guess he drops down right there. So there we go, that should be everything here. Uh, let's see, yep, all the treasure, all the dragons, and the dragon egg, so 100% done. The only thing we're missing is that skill point, so I think we're gonna have to exit the stage, come back in, and then we'll be able to get them, so let me just do that real quick. You know, I should show this part. When we exit, you get to see all the treasure tally up. It's pretty satisfying, even if it does kind of lag in this version. I like, I like in the original, because all of the treasure would kind of, like, fly into Spyro, which was really cool. I think it would... I don't know. It, some, it, the treasure flew somehow. I can't remember if it flew into Spyro or if it flew into something else, but it flew. You know, during these cutscenes when we're loading into a level that kind of looks like Spyro's flying. Oh, can I control him? Oh, I didn't even realize I could do that. We could totally control him a bit right here. Whoa, buddy, chill. So, uh, yeah, he's able to fly that far to get to the level, but once you're inside of it, he can just glide. So I'm not sure why he loses his ability to fly there. Oh, looks like Sparks took some damage at some point. So let's go ahead and get him a little dragonfly there. Heal him back up to yellow. And we're going to jump across this way. And we're not going to flame these guys. So I guess we have to stick them all. I don't, like I said before, I don't know if we have to stick them all at the same time. Because I think they eventually will pop back out. I can't remember. All I remember is uh, Banjo-Kazooie also having a, a bowl that you can stick in the ground like that. Let's go over this way. And I think there's three this way. Or is it just the one? Okay, Sparks took some damage there again. Got that. Okay, so that's three down. Might as well get these guys. Oh, I almost roasted toasted the bull. Yeah, this is the section that has a ton of these guys. We've got all of these, and then we've got the one up top as well. So that's going to be the tricky one. So let's go back this way, and I'm going to see if I can actually make this jump. Come on. Oh gosh, it's so tight, bro. I don't know the exact best spot to stand. Maybe we should stand, like, right here. Get right at the peak of your jump. Wow, I actually went too high and I bonked right there. Okay, try again. The bull is still stuck down there. Dude, it's so tight, bro. Man, I don't know. There must be some trick to this one, because I can't imagine them having a section like this where it really is just intended to be that hard. Maybe it's because I'm touching the wall that's making me drop a little bit. So let's try not touching the wall here and see if that helps us out at all. Come on. Oh, okay, so diving was not the right answer. There we go. That didn't look that bad at all, actually. So, I don't know. I think diving was the wrong move. Um, I think I might have just been d gliding too soon instead of giving my giving my glide time to, uh, or giving my jump time to get height. So, it looks like they're all still stuck. So, if we go stick this one, that should be it. So, let's go ahead and smack them. And there we go, guys. We got that skill point. So, I believe, I believe that's all the skill points for all of the first world. And the only level we have left is the boss world. So, let's go ahead and exit out here. And I'll go meet you guys at the boss level. I gotta do it. I just want to swirly swirl one more time. Woo oh, it didn't, it didn't swirly me. There we go. Yeah. Oh, I'm dizzy. Is that a hidden pink tulip? No. Oh my gosh, Spyro, it's the legendary maneuver. The dragon pizza roll. Oh. Bah. Okay, here we are at the boss stage. So now that we've got all the goodies, we should be able to get this crud to open. Game. Okay, apparently I don't remember how to open this crud. What have I not done? I've done everything, game. What if I talk to you? What if I replay the dragon? Will that work? Come on, Argus. Help me out, bro. I think I understand. I think that to open the boss stage, you have to go into at least one of the exit portals. Because throughout this series so far, every time I beat a level, I've just been pausing and exiting level. I think to open that, all you have to do is go into one of the stages and actually hit the exit portal. I'm thinking that's how this works. So... I don't know how I never knew that, <laughs> but we're going to go inside Stone Hill because the exit portal is very close to the start here. So yeah, we start, we just ram through that guy. I almost have an extra life from killing so many enemies, and uh, that was the wrong way to go. We actually want to go this way. <laughs> Watch, this is the wrong way again. Oh, let's, get, let's get this guy. Let's get that extra life. Come on, buddy. I'll dragon roll on you. Here I come. It didn't work. Well, I, dude, there we go. We got him. That was still not enough. We need one more. Anyways, we're going to go inside this portal. And now I'll meet you guys at the boss level and we'll see if it's open. Yay! He open! Toasty! Let's go in. Oh, I love the look of that orange sky. Even though the clouds are looking a little pixelated. And as usual, it uh, kind of skips a little bit as we load in here. But man, it's just so beautiful. I like orange, okay? I can't help it. Let's fly on down here. 
and immediately get a couple gems. Let's grab those. We have 15 dragons. Let's go take a look real quick. How many are actually in the stage? So just one. So there's 16 dragons in the entire first world, as well as 1,000 gems. So we're going to get all that crud. Ooh! Almost got hit by that... Uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa! I forgot. I forgot these guys take two hits. Three hits? I think it was two. I think for some reason that second fire didn't actually hurt the guy. So but this is actually a pretty short stage. It's mostly focused on the fact that it is a boss level. Oh, wow. I might die here. Come on. That's how I remember doing it. So you flame them once, and then when they jump, you flame them a second time. That's the way to go. Oh, or you just miss. Oh, dude, I got no more sparks. I got no more sparks. That means that if I get hit again, I'm dead. Got him, got him. And got him. Okay. Oh, were there any critters around that I can get some get some extra health? I haven't even got to the boss yet. I'm already hurting. No, it looks like we're looks like we're not gonna be able to get healed back up. So now I can't just get near the gems. I have to actually touch them because Sparks is not here to help me out. That is even more of a danger than the fact that we're gonna die. Is the fact that we have to pick up gems ourselves now. What a minor inconvenience that is. I mean, forget about Sparks' safety. All I care about is the convenience of not having to or of having to uh, get the gems myself now. Let's get all these guys defeated. Oh, okay. I'm hoping if we go through this little section here. No, 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 not that, not that yet. This section, hoping we'll find some kind of critter. Wow, look at that sprawling ocean. That is beautiful. Looks like a giant vat of Mountain Dew Code Red. I love it. Oh gosh, oh my gosh, he got me, dude. The sneak attack around the corner. All right, well, that is one way to get all of our health back is just die. Reigniting, okay. And all of the enemies are gonna be back now. He got me, that was crazy. Okay, let's just not get hit again here. So I could skip through most of these guys. And you know what, dude? Watch this. Dragon roll. He still got me. Okay, the dragon pizza roll tactics are not good. So we'll get that guy. And let's go back this way because we have to not get hit by the sneak attack now. Yeah, got him. So we still have sparks. He is green already, but he's still alive. There we go. And that should be it for this section. I believe if you smash a chest by charging into it, the gems will always home into you. So if you smash them like that, you don't have to worry about picking them up. I think that's the case even if Sparks is dead, but I'm not 100% sure there. But I am 100% sure we got Nevin. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on. I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. Toasty has many tricks up his sleeve. You know, I just realized we're in the artisan world and all of the dragons we've been saving have been artisans. We found guys with hammers, we found sculptor guys, we found uh, painters and all this crud. So that makes total sense. But here we've got Toasty himself. Let's go ahead and Toasty him with that fire. So after we hit him once, he'll drop some gems and he'll run away. I want to get these guys before I focus on Toasty himself. Whoa, that was close. That was close. Oh, they almost got me. All right, going for the hit. Got him. And turns out it's actually just a sheep on stilts. Or is that a chicken? Some kind of some kind of creature. Yeah, got him. There we go. And he should drop a lot once we get him. Yeah, so the boss himself is pretty easy. It's mostly just the uh, the dogs that we have to deal with. So we got a five from him. He dropped three fives. We'll grab that. And I think these last two chests will have greens, both of them. There we go, guys. So there we are, completely done with the artisan world. Go ahead and take this portal and get back to the hub world here. There we go. Get all the way up to 1,000 treasures or gems, whatever you want to call them. Oh, there's plenty of sheep out here as well. So let's go ahead and get healed up. Grab that guy. Get all the way back up. Oh, he's already yellow. Okay, we're good. Anyways, guys, we are done with this world and we are going to go ahead and wrap things up here for today. We'll come back next time. We're going to go to the balloonist and get lifted off to the second world. I'll see you guys then. Take care.